doing? Do it, do it, do it, do it. If you don't mind, just kind of chill out for just a minute. Again, we're gonna we're gonna try to get uh, some folks, more folks online, and uh, so they can join us. I'm coming from you from my home office, which isn't in great shape today, but we're making it work. And I'm gonna introduce our our my my good friend Lisa here in just a minute. Uh, she's got some really cool things for parents for kids today. I think you'll. You'll really, so we, of course, you'll hear a little bit of wind. There's a little bit of wind here in Texas today, but uh, that makes it more natural, hopefully, and it makes, makes it more exciting for you all. Uh, in addition, tell us where you're from. Why don't you write in there? We want to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, and so if you have some questions, as I talk to Lisa Whittlesey here in a couple of minutes, uh, go ahead and pop those comments in the comment section. What kind of questions you have about anything? I will get started. So again, we're just waiting just a second so to see uh, who, to see who's going to come on and join us. Uh, we again, uh, we we had to cancel our show early this year, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't continue to promote agriculture in our world. And so we, this is what today's going to be about. We've got several of these lined up, and our first one is here today. So still waiting, just a couple of minutes to see you coming online with us. Thank you so much for being here. We're, we're so excited about bring, bringing agriculture to you and your homes. Maybe this is a little break from, the, from your kids having to do their math problems or you as parents trying to remember how to do math problems. Uh, I know that'd be a struggle for me, but uh, the homework assignment is, and, and you get a chance just to enjoy a little bit of what's happening in the outdoors. Some of those outdoors may be indoors. So that's our purpose today. Uh, with that being said, I, I think we're at a good place where we can go ahead and get started with today's session. Uh, our session today, this is our first ever Rodeo Houston Ag Chat. Our first session today is going to be focused on gardening. Uh, as you all know, the, the mission of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is to promote agriculture. We do that by hosting an annual family-friendly experience that educates and entertains the public, supports Texas youth, showcases Western heritage and provides year-round educational support within the community. Well, today we're moving our experience online. Uh, we're gonna have several of these set up over the next month or so. Uh, we're hoping this, this hits our family-friendly experience portion uh, of, our, of our mission in addition to our agriculture mission. And so hopefully you will enjoy it. I am so pleased. I, I have to tell you today we're starting our first session with a person that I, I think I've known my entire life, uh, somebody that is a great, great friend, and uh, and her name is Lisa Whittlesey. Lisa is the uh, director, I may not have the right, the right title, but she heads up the Junior Master Gardener Program, and we're going to talk about some of the Junior Master Gardener Program uh, curriculum here as we go through the experience, uh, but uh, yeah, it's already good to see. We have folks from Level Land, Lisa, people from Houston, uh, good awesome. morning, Missouri, uh, Missouri City. So pretty cool. Let me tell you a little bit about Lisa before I, I kick it to her. Uh, she is a uh, a Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo scholar, and before that, she was even an exhibitor. You'll see some pictures of her in the old Astrodome showing uh, her kids. Uh, both Taylor and Cole showed at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Her dad was a county extension agent from Lano. He goes way back. Uh, our families go way back with with my parents. Well, of course, what he's known for today is heading up the Junior Master Gardener Program with Texas A&M AgriLife. Uh, that website is jmgkids.org, and we'll talk about more of that. We've got three generations of agriculture in the Whittlesey family, uh, and today I'm so excited to welcome Lisa. Uh, just as a reminder, as Lisa comes on board, we want to keep this interactive, so keep those questions coming. Lisa, how the heck are you? I'm awesome. How are you, Chris? Well, it's uh, it's a different time, as we know, in a different place, but we're making the best of it. And today we're looking to promote agriculture. Tell us about where you are today. Well, I am fortunate to get to be outside. And I know a lot of us have enjoyed the fact that we can still go outside. Um, today I'm here at Texas A&M uh, University at the Leach Teaching Gardens, which is just a beautiful place. Um, where we have exhibits and different types of gardens that people can learn more about gardening if they want to do it in their own home. Well, that sounds fantastic. It's a little windy there, it looks like, on campus at the Texas a and campus. 
uh, but it looks beautiful, just a beautiful day. And so, uh, and, and look at us, see how we're practicing social distancing and we can still educate uh, from, our, from my home and, and from you there in the garden. Hey, uh, what, again, we're talking about kids and gardening and parenting and some of the things that, that we can be doing. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, I know a little bit about gardening, not as much as I should, but tell me a little bit about uh, planting and specifically the, the two big strategies to do that, which includes transplanting or just planting a seed. Walk us through some of that, if you don't mind. I will. Um, one thing, we have had a lot of increase uh, within Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service with people wanting to know about gardening. There's always been kind of interest in farm to table and locally grown, but particularly during this time, lots of people are requesting garden information. So I want to try to help our folks that might be interested in starting and that have never gardened to kind of know how to get started. One is you can start by seed or you can start by transplant. So I want to start a little bit just sharing some of the common vegetable seeds that do really well for us direct seeded in the garden this time of year. So things like summer squash, zucchini, um, green beans, corn, cantaloupe, all of those things that do real well for us direct seeding into the garden. So Chris, I'm going to let you see if we can see these seeds up, up close. Here's some of the bean seeds I have. Um, one of the first things is how deep do you plant a seed? I'm going to test your, your gardening knowledge, Chris. What do you think? Oh, I, you, I, I'm supposed to get those questions ahead of time. That's what my contract <laughs> you can't put me on Okay, the well, here's the good rule of thumb. You gonna, want to, go ahead. You want to plant the seed about two to three times the width of the seed is how deep it should go. So a bigger seed, like a bean seed, can be planted a little bit deeper, whereas something like um, a lettuce seed or a carrot seed that's very, very tiny, you don't want to plant those, but just on the surface of the soil and barely pat those in. So the bigger the seed, the deeper you can plant it. Hey, um, exactly what I was going to say, Lisa. So I, I knew it was. I knew it was. Now, there's a few things we need to be sure any garden is going to have. One is you got to have light. To grow vegetables, you absolutely have to have light. Six to eight hours of sunlight a day is really what you need. The other thing is you've got to be able to provide soil. Everybody thinks their soil is horrible but we've got to work with what we have, right? And so you've got to have good soil. And we'll talk a little bit later in this on some things you might could do to help improve your soil, but you've got to have light and you've got to have soil and you've got to have water. And those are the three main things that you need to have. Um, when we're talking about seeds and we're talking about transplants, that I'll show you, you may go, I go to the garden center and I don't know what to pick out. This is where A&M AgriLife Extension can really help you. Our county extension offices have uh, planting guides for your area. So if you want to know what varieties to plant, when to plant them, that's your greatest source to be able to do that. So our, our horticulture website is aggiehorticulture.tamu.edu. It's a great way for you to look and to find your county office from there or from the main AgriLife Extension website. So great resources on how to know what kind of seeds to plant. Cool. And, and so, we'll, we will definitely uh, provide some of those resources. So we've talked a little about trans. So tell us a little bit about transplanting there. Well, you may go in the garden center and you see all of this and it's like, what in the world? I'm going to tell you that the top ones that most Texans need to have, that's tomatoes and peppers. If you grow tomatoes and peppers, you're going to be happy all summer long. And then I also brought a few of my favorite herbs. One is basil. Um, it's real easy to grow. It works great in containers. It's an annual, but it's one that does really well. The other one is rosemary. And the nice thing about rosemary is it actually is a perennial and it will stay in your bed year after year. So if you like barbecuing and you like grilling chicken and stuff like that, rosemary is great on that and on potatoes and lots of other things. So those are two herbs that are really nice to be able to use. I want to look. A if I'm not mistaken. You're a big basil fan, right? I am because you know why? Caprese yeah. salad is my favorite. 
that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I remember you saying that to me before. Sorry, go ahead. So how to pick a good transplant. Sometimes they come in little six packs like this. I kind of combined a few in here together. Or sometimes they come in individual pots. The main thing you want to do is first you want to be careful when you take it out of the pot. So you want to kind of tip it over and you want to see nice strong roots like we see here. Okay. Sometimes you may tip them over and you see roots that are getting a little bit crowded. And if you have that, you can just break it up with your finger before you plant them, okay? So you want a really strong uh, stem, a plant that looks healthy. Your tomato plant, this is excellent because it's nice and stocky and it's ready to go into the ground. And a little tip on tomatoes, Chris. If you were going to plant a tomato, how deep do you think you'd plant that? Well, I would go with whatever you told me. <laughs> He's not even going to try to guess. A lot of people would say, okay, I'm going to put it right here at the soil. Oh, it's got to go deeper than that. Okay. So tomatoes are one of those that really benefit from planting deeply. So y'all don't look at me, but y'all can actually take off these stem, these leaves that are here. And you can plant it very deeply and it's going to form roots all along here. So it's going to help really develop a strong root system. A lot of my gardening friends will plant it in a trench, meaning they'll lay it like this and just have the tip of it going up. And all along here under ground, you're going to get roots forming. So just a little tip for tomatoes to help you be really successful. Another thing is it's getting kind of late. So if you want to plant tomatoes, get them out now. And I would really suggest that you try the cherry tomatoes or the grape tomatoes. They tend to set fruit better as we get into the hotter weather. Um, tomatoes are one, when the weather gets hot, they stop flowering. And so you'll have a little better luck at home either in an in-ground bed or in a container if you do the cherry tomatoes or patio tomatoes as your first start. Love it. Well, guess what, Lisa? I have to stop you because the most frequent question coming up right now, because you're in Texas, right? Because we're in Texas, they, they want to know about blue bonnets. Do you have any, any comments about blue bonnets? You know, everybody wants to have blue bonnets. Here's the deal. You plant them not when they're blooming, okay? So if you want blue bonnets, you need to plant those in the fall. So for most of us in Texas, that's going to be late October, November, December. You can buy seed, and that's when you want to broadcast your seed. You want to have your blue bonnets kind of like well-drained soils, so don't have them in a low-lying area. Sometimes they really like growing in almost sand. Um, so they grow well then. Be sure on the seed packet it says scarified seed. Uh, blue bonnets have a real hard seed coat, and those seeds that you buy, if it says scarified, they've already broken the seed coat, so you'll get better germination rate. Good question. All right, we're going back to peppers and tomatoes. The question is, is it too late to start seeds? It is. It really is. And that's just because, y'all know we live in Texas, and our, our spring is pretty short, and then the weather gets hot. So there's a few of our plants, like tomatoes peppers that really do better if we start them from transplants but there's a lot of transplants that are available now so go and and get those you'll just have a whole lot better luck but there's many things that you can start from seed that are our warm season vegetables so the zucchini and, and summer squash and corn and beans and things like that awesome okay so we've talked about varieties and soil and sunlight and seed type talk to us a little bit about uh color just color to the lands oh, sweet well you know it, color makes me happy okay yes. and the garden centers know it too because you go to the garden center and they tempt you right with all those blooming plants i'm going to have randy pan down here um and by the way let's stop and let's all give randy a night randy seagraves who's keeping his social distancing <laughs> let's give him a nice round of applause these zoom ins and zoom outs is making for great television thank you so much randy awesome thank you randy they they love the close-up pictures um so a couple of things one is look on the label 
But what it tells you that plant likes to grow, if it likes full sun or if it likes partial shade, that's the first thing you want to look for. And I like to have a variety of color. Things like begonias are great as an annual that you can put in a container, maybe by your front door or on your patio. Um, I brought one of my hanging baskets from home because this is something that you could do by combining two different plants. This is a verbena, and then this is our ornamental sweet potato vine. And I love that chartreuse uh, green paired with the purple verbena. It looks nice. Both of them tend to be real drapey, so those are fun to be able to do. And I, could, I would be remiss to say, if you have children at home, you have to try zinnias. Those are one of my favorite, favorite flowers. What are those you called, can, Lisa? What are they? Zinnias. Okay, zinnias. All right. Uh huh. And they come in every color. And I would look for ones that say there's like giant or mixed colors or cut and carry. They're great floral uh displays in the garden but they're also great cutting flowers if you like to bring flowers in if you've got kids that like to grab bouquets uh, and bring in for you zinnias is a way to go and you can start them in little bitty pots at home and if you don't have any of these i just wash and reuse them you can start them in an egg carton at home if you've got salad trays at home, you could start them in that, but you wanna grow your own little transplant so then you can put it directly out in the garden. Um, I found that that's kind of nice because you could go ahead and get those started now. And the other thing is sunflowers. Sunflowers are really fun for kids to grow and they come in lots of different sizes, uh, heights, as well as colors. So those are some of my favorites. Awesome. So you've talked a little bit about uh, kids and some of the things they could be doing. Uh, so a little deeper dive on that for families with children. Uh, obviously, we know this is a great family activity. Can you share some ideas on how families can actually do this together? Well, you know, gardening is such a wonderful way to connect people. Um, it's fun. It's physical. So for kids being cooped up inside, it's a great way for them to get outside and work off some of that energy. If you've ever gardened, you know that, boy, you can burn some energy tilling the soil or turning the soil or putting out mulch and all those kinds of things. For kids, having them involved in planting, so whether it's planting zinnias or planting pots of containers, and having them have the responsibility of taking care of them and watering them and watching and tending for them every day. And at this time, when, when families are together, it's a great connector, almost like it is having family meal time together and cooking together and growing your own vegetables. The research really shows that the kids grow it, they're a whole lot more likely to taste it and try it. So those are some real positive things, I think, that can happen. I love it. That is that's awesome. Hey, any any talk a little bit about Junior Master Gardener and and uh, the resources you all have. Uh, and then also, I think y'all have a big activity coming up as well, right? We do. Um, our um, our Junior Master Gardener website is jmgkids.us, uh, or you can Google Junior Master Gardener and we'll pull up. Um, it's an international youth gardening program that's headquartered right here at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And we have curricula to help support gardening um, in schools and after school programs. The great thing is gardening is a way to really integrate math and science and social studies and language arts in a really fun way. And so we encourage you to check out our website. There's a lot of resources families that are there and actually starting tomorrow we're going to have our very first virtual online JMG program so if you've got kiddos that are interested in doing that it's free you can go to our website you can sign up and then you can start we have a list of resources that you'll need for each of the lessons and we're going to do the lessons with you and it'll be every Tuesday and Thursday at one o'clock starting tomorrow so I hope some of your your viewers will enjoy doing that and being a part of that with us hey and, and you mentioned you did mention just for a minute I mean a lot of kids right now are, are doing their their math and their science at home with their parents and I just want to go back there for a minute from our work over the years together uh, the, the gardening work that you all do, 
does tie directly to the development of, of skill sets in, in the math and in the science areas. Is that is that accurate? A absolutely. So we have a lot of teachers that work with our program and our curricula. So our curricula for the state of Texas is aligned to the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills by grade level, by academic content area. So those alignments are for science and math and social studies and language arts and even health. So it's a great way in a very integrated approach to really integrate science and writing and literature connections and all sorts of things. So it makes learning very holistic. And as Chris, you and I know, growing up in the 4-H program, it makes it hands-on learning, which uh, JMG is a 4-H project area, and there's no better way for kids to learn than doing it. I love it. I love it. Let's start to wrap up. I want to. I want to talk just a minute about why why this work is so important to you, Lisa. Uh, you again, your history in, in the ag world. Why is it? What does it mean to you? And then, how does it drive your passion in gardening? Oh, wow. You know, for me, growing up in a family where agriculture was so important to our family, it was just such a blessing to know where my food came from. And I had the pleasure of that. And when I graduated from A&M and I did my student teaching, there were a lot of kids that I worked with that just didn't know where their food came from. And when I first started my career at Extension, I taught horticulture at the Women's Federal Prison Camp. And that was a wonderful opportunity to really see for the women that were in my class, how gardening could not only um, teach them things, but also it provided a sense of self-worth and calming and teaching responsibility. And a lot of them wanted to start gardening with their children. That's really where the whole idea of the Junior Master Gardener program came from is we didn't have a lot of resources at that time within A&M AgriLife Extension for children's gardening. And so we had a team of people that believed in that, were able to pull together. And that was over 20 years ago. This is our 20th anniversary, and we now have programs in all 50 states in about 10 countries. Um, and it's just amazing to see the impact that it's really had on children. And for me, it's my passion, it's my love. I know that it makes a difference and it's why I get up every single day um, to be able to do something to plant that little seed in the hearts of the children and families we serve. Oh, that is that is awesome. Hey, again, we're kind of starting to wrap up. We have a couple of questions, if you don't mind addressing real quick for us, Lisa. Sure. In terms of the tomato plant that you showed earlier, if you were to plant that today, how long would it take for, for the kids and uh, that, if they planted that, how long would it take to start seeing uh, a tomato growing on there? Um, most of those, and I'm going to look on here to see if it tells you, it says 70 days after planting to maturity. Um, most of those you're going to start seeing probably 60 to 70 days for most of our cherry type tomatoes. And I love that for kids because you get a lot of harvest and you can go out there every single day and there's going to be tomatoes to pick and it will just go a little longer in the growing season. For our school programs, when we have schools actually in session, we encourage cherry tomatoes because they can actually get some harvest before school's out at the end of May. So start with the transplants um, and boy, tomatoes and basil and peppers and rosemary are some of my favorites and really easy for home gardeners that are getting started. Perfect. And then one other question uh, from my good friend, Barry Summerhour. He wants to know, is it too late to plant his okra seeds? Hi, Barry. Actually, no. And you probably could wait a little bit. Okra loves the heat. Okay. So okra and our southern peas, like black-eyed peas and purple hull peas, are things that we can plant um, even a little bit later, and it will go through the heat of the summer. The hotter it gets, the better it likes it. So some of these other vegetables I mentioned, you need to get started now, but the okra and, and peas, the purple hull or southern pea types, you can wait just a little bit later to get those started, and they'll go awesome. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks so much. And uh, there may be some more questions that pop up on the chat and we'll have folks there that can answer them, including you, Lisa, uh, or when they watch this, uh, maybe later, if they didn't, they weren't able to, to watch it live. So let me do wrap you want Randy to pan some of the, the gardens. Yeah, yeah. Do that real quick, Randy. Don't get too close. Keep your spread, obviously. But yeah, give us a look. That'd be great. So some existing examples of raised beds. It doesn't have to be this 
big or this technical, but those are some that we have that are handicapped accessible. Um, at home, I have mine in galvanized tubs as well as in the ground. Um, this is our trellis for climbing plants. So if you plant things like pole beans or cucumbers, it could be climbing on a fence so it helps you to maximize your space a little more and then randy i'll have you turn this way this is some of our in-ground gardens uh, we're fixing to replant in here but you'll see some of the bright light swiss chard that we had that's just finishing up and the drip irrigation samples that we have here in the rows so i hope that you viewers can enjoy some time outside and use this time um, as we're um, you know, staying away and social distancing, that it can be a time when your family can really connect and have the opportunity to share that gardening experience. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us today. Randy Seagraves, thank you for uh, for running the video. Thanks, Randy. You're, you're a rock star. Uh, again, this is our first one ever, so leave us some comments uh, in, in the in the messaging below on our Facebook page. Also, if you have questions, we certainly want you to continue to ask them because Lisa and her team, she has some folks that can help answer some questions. In addition to that, if you're a family that's going to get started and plant something, post those pictures for us so we can share and we can see what's going on in, in your family uh, during this time because we think it's this is a cool time for you to be able to do that, to have that family time and to grow a, a little garden either uh, through a raised bed, maybe you have in the house somewhere or somewhere that can, has access to sunlight and, and outside as well. Uh, and, and so in Chris, saying that, yes, go ahead, Lisa. Chris, I might tell you that our Aggie Horticulture Facebook page, we're doing a whole series on family gardening. Um, and if you're interested, those are going to be um, every Wednesday and Friday at one o'clock. We have them recorded as well. We had several on building raised beds and vegetable gardening. Today, we have one on home fruit. So just know that there's a lot of resources that a and AgriLife Extension has right now related to gardening. It's the time of year. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. And I have to say, you know, in addition to our agriculture mission and things that we can learn. There's something to be said about when folks find their passion, it's really not work, right? And every time I work with Lisa and you see the passion she has for her work, she gets up every day, it's not even work, right? I mean, you just love doing this. This is really about who you are. It is, and I feel like it's my calling and what a blessing to love my job and what I do. Cool, and I was thinking it connects to your purpose and it's just so great to see your smile and face to help us out today. I'll close with that and tell you a little bit about next week. Lisa mentioned earlier that kids that uh, actually plant uh, uh, garden uh, vegetables and fruits, they, they are more likely to eat them. Well, guess what? Next week, we're going to talk about agriculture and we're going to talk about some healthy recipes with a very close friend of mine. Uh, we'll announce that later. But next Wednesday at 11 a.m., we're going to do some cooking and some recipes looking really forward to that of connecting the dots regarding where, what we're doing here with a raw product and then taking it to uh, through consumption as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. You all help spread the word. Uh, Lisa's waving. I'm waving as well. Help spread the word. This is our first one. We want to continue to do these to help bring agriculture into your homes. And everybody, please stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We know these are unprecedented times. Uh, but so let's use them as the best we can. And obviously, uh, one way to do that is to spend time with family and, and do some gardening. With that being said, thank you for everything. And we'll see you next week.